Hey, it's Rich Powell from ClearPath. We're focused on clean, dispatchable, zero emission power technologies. We believe energy storage will be a key piece to help solve the clean energy puzzle. Storage technologies benefit each portion of the grid, from generation to transmission over long distances to distribution to homes and businesses. Our electricity grid is complex. It must balance receiving and discharging electricity in real time, all while maintaining its current. Unlike virtually any other product in our economy, up to this point there's been little we could do to store electricity. Imagine if refrigerators didn't exist today in the dairy supply chain, for example, and we still had to use almost all milk within hours of when we milk the cows. Energy storage can change this and become a cornerstone for the grid, allowing us to save electricity for times when electricity is expensive or demand is high. It can also help in balancing and maintaining the grid. Energy storage has been around for almost 100 years via pumped hydropower. Today, we generally put energy storage into three main buckets. First, thermal energy, think heating and cooling. Second, chemical energy, mostly batteries. Third, mechanical or kinetic energy, that's storage for movement or pressure, including pumped hydro. The Department of Energy has been a leader of energy storage R&D since the late 70s. Today, several national labs focus on energy storage for transportation, buildings, healthcare, and grid-scale solutions. Recently, the DOE announced a storage launch pad alongside an advanced energy storage initiative to supercharge and better target grid-scale storage research and development at national labs. The launch pad is expected to make its home at Pacific Northwest National Lab. There are exciting things happening in Congress, too. Bills like the Better Energy Storage Technologies Act, or the BEST Act, are underway. Quidnet Energy is one of the energy storage companies we are closely watching. We think their technology is revolutionary. They've received funding from ARPA-E at the Department of Energy through the DAYS program, as well as significant private investment from the likes of the Prime Coalition and Bill Gates' Breakthrough Energy Ventures. Quidnet uses a technology called geomechanical pumped storage, a technique with similarities to traditional pumped hydropower. Just to recap, traditional pumped hydropower uses upper and lower reservoirs to create an elevation change, mimicking traditional hydropower. The water is pumped uphill by excess electricity to store the energy and allowed to run downhill through turbines to generate electricity again when we need it. For context, pumped hydro is almost all of grid-scale energy storage today. The issue with pumped hydro is that it requires elevation changes such as mountains and a water source nearby like riverways. Not only are there physical restrictions for locations, the construction costs can be quite high, anywhere from hundreds of millions to billions of dollars, and they can take years to license and build. This geomechanical pump storage, or GPS, technique that Quidnet uses applies the concepts of pumped hydro by repurposing drilling and well construction techniques to store energy in the form of pressurized water in underground rock. So how does this store energy? To charge, water is pumped down a well into a pressurized water pool. During discharge, the well top valve is open and the pressure in the well is released directly into the water turbine, which generates electricity. GPS does not require specific physical locations such as mountainous terrain and is less than half the cost of traditional pumped hydro. Not only can these projects use a mature and accessible supply chain for parts, they can be small and located almost anywhere and they don't impact existing rivers and lakes. Interestingly, GPS can also be used to repurpose fossil fuel assets as well, from using old coal plant ponds to end-of-life oil and gas fields. Quidnet's GPS is a promising technology as we look towards a future with a high demand for long-duration energy storage. Thanks for listening.